Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today, we explore the basics on one of, if not the least talked about, of the super predators from the dinosaur age. Plenty of enormous carnivores like Tyrannosaurus rex, Spinosaurus, and Giganotosaurus have received plenty of attention in film, television, and scientific discussion. But while this carnivore rivals even those tyrants in size, it unfortunately has not received the same fanfare. It's the South American tyrant, Tyrannotitan. For you history nuts out there, I'm sorry to say that the history of Tyrannotitan is not that complex or lengthy, so we can get through this pretty quick. The first remains recovered for this dinosaur are actually quite recent, first being recovered in 2005 by a team of Argentine paleontologists. These remains would be recovered at the La Juanita farm within the Chubut province of the modern day country of Argentina. These first remains would consist of what is believed to be two individuals, and more specifically include an assortment of teeth, a number of vertebrae, ribs, and an assortment of leg bones, among others. These two fairly lackluster fossils are a large reason for why this predator is often overlooked. While paleontologists could determine this was certainly an enormous predator, that is often as far as scientific study can go. Extensive reports or papers, when trying to draw conclusions, are stuck basing their information on either these two individuals, which have a number of significant gaps even when combined, or must draw comparisons to other large theropods and fellow family members, both of which obviously are not one-to-one -one by any stretch of the imagination. So a lot of what we will discuss later in the video, despite a reasonable amount of scientific evidence, can still be somewhat dubious. Not exactly something many documentaries would be fiending to include. In terms of the name Tyrannotitan, this largely stems from Greek origins, including the words Tyranno, meaning tyrant, and Titan, referring to ancient giants from Greek mythology, emphasis on the giant part, having the name to be broadly read as Tyrant Giant. The sole species of this carnivore, Chubutensis, references its region of origin, that being the Argentine province of Chibut. Speaking of this name, the Tyran part, not the Argentina part, that's pretty cut and dry, you would be forgiven for assuming this predator would belong to the notorious family of carnivorous theropods, the Tyrannosauridae. Tyrannosaurids were a group of powerful hunters that first appeared in the early Cretaceous, around 130 million years ago, across much of what is now Europe and Asia eventually expanding into what is now North America, and growing to become some of the largest and most terrifying hunters to ever reign. Yet, despite reaching a similar size and carrying a similar name to the family's namesake, Tyrannosaurus rex, it is believed Tyrannotitan had no such relation. Anatomically, it lacks many defining skeletal traits, like cranial proportioning and foot construction, among others. But one of the most obvious reasons is largely due to geography. As I mentioned, all Tyrannosaurids we are aware of resided in the Northern Hemisphere, in continents like Europe, Asia, and North America. At this point, South America was not connected to North America by Central America, and wouldn't be until around 3 million years ago. For this reason, it would be practically impossible for any early Tyrannosaurids to have migrated far enough south to call present-day Argentina home, and eventually evolve into the Tyrannotitan. Unless you believe in a few specific theories like me, but I don't think the scientific community are ready for those right now. Instead, Tyrannotitan is believed to have belonged to another family of harrowing hunters, the Carcardontosauridae. We have talked about the Carcardontosaurids a number of times here on the channel, as small as the Concavenator, who once roamed the prehistoric woodlands of modern-day Spain, bizarre silhouette and all, to as recent as the Giganotosaurus, one of the largest carnivorous dinosaurs to have ever reigned over the lands of our prehistoric world. So, to keep it brief, Carcardontosaurids are a group of carnivorous theropods that reigned from the early to near the end of the late Cretaceous, including some of the largest predatory dinosaurs to have ever roamed the Earth. 
while some species would populate the northern continents, many more and many of their larger members would be native to Africa and South America, providing a much clearer geographical correlation to Tyrannotitan. Estimates for the size of Tyrannotitan are obviously dubious with limited fossil records to pull from, but the best estimates we can determine from what information is available hint at Tyrannotitan reaching nearly 38 feet, or around 12 meters in length, and standing at about 12 feet, or 4 meters in height. And with estimates placing its mass near the upwards of 7 tons, or just about 8 short tons, this was certainly a foreboding predator. As we had explained rigorously in our video on Giganotosaurus, determining the largest carnivorous theropod is a very nuanced and frankly loaded question. But at this size, Tyrannotitan is routinely considered one of the largest carnivorous theropods of all time. If not in the top 5, then certainly in the top 10. Now, Despite how I highlighted its membership in the Carcardontosauridae family, many paleontologists have noted a number of unusual features Tyrannotitan had when compared with its relatives. While it certainly boasted a characteristically long, slender skull, with some estimates placing its length to be around 6 feet or just under 2 meters in length, the teeth within them were somewhat strange. A defining feature of the teeth for Carcardontosaurids was their thin, blade-like appearance, boasting a strong recurve, excellent for easily cutting into the flesh of their victims. Tyrannotitan, meanwhile, appeared to have a much less dramatic recurve. The serrations along the edge of Tyrannotitan's teeth also appeared to be less finely serrated. Instead, the denticles, the small protrusions that create the serrated edge of the teeth, appeared more rigidly defined, sometimes compared more to a chisel. Some paleontologists even highlight how the teeth of Tyrannotitan appear more closely related to the Jurassic Allosaurus than to any Carcardontosaurid, which actually makes some sense. It is widely believed Carcardontosaurids share some ancestry with the Allosaur family, so Tyrannotitan's teeth may represent an older or more basal trait that would later be dropped by other Carcardontosaurids as the family persisted. But teeth were not the only adaptation Tyrannotitan would choose to defy the status quo on. The forelimbs of Tyrannotitan were proportionally much smaller than most Carcardontosaurids. Like many large carnivores, their arms were still not that impressive compared to their bodies, and especially to their hind limbs. But Cargardontosaurids are often noted for their more well-developed and larger forelimbs than other contemporary hunters, namely Tyrannosaurids. This fact in relation to the arms of Tyrannotitan hints at these arms having a less active use in their day-to-day -day life, and especially in hunting. Their physique overall was also believed to be stockier and larger compared to the more slender and lighter builds of their family. Tying into this fact was another significant departure from other Carcardontosaurids. The lack of pneumaticity in their hips and tail vertebrae. Pneumaticity is just a fancy way of saying they lacked air pockets in their bones, meant to decrease their weight and allow for their larger body sizes. So, how would they still be so swole? Well, the answer is another small skeletal difference. That being their tail vertebrae, having unusually tall neural spines, much longer than those in their back or neck. These extended spines hint at Tyrannotitan being able to sport a greater number of muscle attachments in their tail than many other large carnivores, and thus provide greater strength in this area. This strength was likely necessary to help them raise their tails higher to counterbalance their heavy bodies, essentially offsetting the increased weight of their bodies and skeletons without the previously mentioned air pockets. It's unclear if this lack of air pockets and more muscular tail was a specialized adaptation to provide some kind of advantage like greater strength, a unique feature they developed independent of their family due to unique circumstances, or some basal trait that later members simply evolved out of. But whatever the case, it is yet another feature clearly showing how even with the little evidence paleontologists had, this creature routinely proves itself to be a fascinating one. Tyrannotitan is believed to have lived sometime in the early Cretaceous, between 113 to 100 million years ago. 
Fossil records indicate it would have lived in what is now modern-day Argentina, but it is certainly possible that Tyrannotitan would have roamed beyond these bounds. Evidence from the region shows Argentina during this time would be a rich and diverse one, populated with river systems, expansive floodplains, and lush forests, although it is likely semi-arid regions would still dot the landscape. Identified species from the same time and region as Tyrannotitan are fairly scarce, largely limited to non-described large herbivores and small carnivorous theropod remains. However, some named creatures have slipped through the cracks, namely the Patago Titan. This enormous titanosaur is sometimes included among the largest dinosaurs and largest land animals to have ever lived, with some estimates placing its size to be around 130 feet, or around 40 meters in length and weighing upwards of 77 tons, or just about 85 short tons. Another named, although nowhere near as impressive, dinosaur would be the Geniodectes. While, yes, it is named, very little has been recovered for this carnivore aside from a frontal jaw fragment, but it is believed to have been related to the horned Ceratosaurus, although again, information and details are very scarce. Tyrannotitan was believed to have reigned as the apex predator of its environment, with few, if any, large predators to threaten them. It is unlikely even a Tyrannotitan could take on a fully grown titanosaur like Patagotitan, but weakened or young individuals are certainly fair game. How this creature hunted has long been debated. Their teeth and skull structure hint at Tyrannotitan likely favoring a hunting style similar to other Carcharodontosaurids like Giganotosaurus, where tearing flesh from their victims was favored over crushing their bones and windpipes, as their jaws seemed to favor surface area and pulling over grip and raw power. Fossilized trackways from other Carcharodontosaurids have also hinted that Tyrannotitan may have engaged in pack hunting, likely a necessity when hunting prey as large as a titanosaur, although again, this is still speculative. Tyrannotitan is an interesting case in terms of pop culture attention. While its incredible size and obvious ferocity make it a seemingly perfect candidate to become a media darling, that isn't really the case for Tyrannotitan. Likely due to a mix of its glaring scarcity and decent remains, big yet not biggest physique, and somewhat recent discovery, the Tyrannotitan has lacked any significant starring roles or appearances. The few roles Tyrannotitan has managed to land include a few toys, specifically in the Jurassic World toy line, video game appearances like 2015's Jurassic World The Game, and probably its largest role as a fairly recent addition to the 2020 game Path of Titans. Which seems a bit late if you ask me, considering half of its name is literally in the game's title, but I digress. In an ironic twist, despite its size, the Tyrannotitan has struggled to rise out of the shadows of many other theropods, like Tyrannosaurus rex, or even its close relative, the Giganotosaurus. But that does not detract from just how incredible the Tyrannotitan is in its own right. While its fossils are sparse, with what information we do have, the Tyrannotitan was a unique creature and a standout from its family with incredible adaptations that made it a threat not to be crossed lightly. Hopefully, this dinosaur can titan up its image and make a greater name for itself sometime soon in the future. That's good to for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Tyrannotitan and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. I probably should have had a bit more space in between this and Giganotosaurus, but hey, consider it a double header for really big heads. With Mashikasaurus just there for moral support. We are off next week. But the following week, we take a deep dive into the history of the closest dinosaurs ever came to retaking the planet and explore the legacy of the Terror Birds. Thank you for your support and see you in the next video.